I think it's obvious right away that the designers of the Dynacaster microphone had a particular industry standard microphone in their sights the entire time. We're talking the Shure SM7B. The EQ switches on the back of the microphone, the XLR jack that is in line with the microphone mount right under there. All of these are gonna seem really familiar to anyone who's ever used the Shure SM7B. However, there are some major differences too with this microphone, and dare I say, improvements? Hey, it's Matt Haynes, and quick disclaimer, SC Electronics sent me the Dynacaster to review on loan. I have to return it. Nobody's paying me to review this. And also, before we get started, don't confuse this microphone with the less expensive Dynacaster DCM6 or the DCM3. This is the flagship model. This is the one that started it all, and it's the one with the most features. The biggest difference between the Dynacaster and traditional broadcast microphones is it has a built-in preamp. Traditional broadcast microphones are dynamic microphones, just like this is. However, dynamic microphones don't put out a lot of output level compared to a condenser microphone because there's no internal amplification. The SM7B is notorious for having a really low output level to the point where cheaper preamps can't amplify it properly and you end up getting a really muddy sound. Many people end up buying a signal booster such as a Fethead or a cloud lifter to get the best sound out of the mic, but that ends up adding another $100 or so to the cost. Now, the Dynacaster is a true dynamic microphone just like the SM7B, but SC Electronics has thoughtfully put that signal booster in there. The Dynacaster is already $100 cheaper than the SM7B, and now you've got a signal booster built in, which is saving you even more money. So from an economic standpoint, this microphone makes a lot of sense. A flip of one of those dip switches on the back fires up the internal booster, and you do need phantom power to operate that booster, but most mixers supply phantom power. And you know, if you were using one of those inline boosters like the Fethead, you'd still need phantom power to power it. However, you don't have to use the internal booster if you don't want to. You can turn it off and use the Dynacaster as a low sensitivity, traditional dynamic microphone. But even in a passive mode, it is slightly more sensitive than the SM7B. And when you kick in that booster, it's actually more sensitive than some of SC Electronics flagship condenser microphones, like the SC2200 that I reviewed earlier. Okay, so how does the SC Electronics Dynacaster sound? Well, I mean, how do you want it to sound? And I say that because with those EQ switches in the back, you've got a lot of options. You can really tailor this microphone to sound how you want it. And in flat position, if both switches are set to flat like they are now, the microphone has a pleasing neutral quality that isn't overhyped. In the low end, you have the option of either a bass boost or a bass roll off. And then in the high end, you have an option of boosting it or boosting it even more. If you boost both of those EQ switches, you're gonna have a very scooped, very sort of hyped broadcast kind of sound. But really play around with the switches because you could emulate an SM7B, an RE20, an RE320, and it's not gonna be identical, but it's gonna be pretty close. Okay, so let's take a listen to the EQ options. This is flat in both the high and the low end. And now this is the Dynacaster with the low end rolled off. And now you're hearing the microphone with the low end boost. And just for reference, this is flat again. And now I have the mild high end boost turned on. And now I have the extreme high end turned on. I don't know what to call it. It's just the, the extra boost there. And now I have the low end and the mild high end both boosted, so you're kind kind of getting that uh, podcasty broadcasty sound. All right, now we have it in super scoop mode. We've got the low end boosted, we've got the high end boosted, and uh, it is very much in your face and very hyped. The Dynacaster also comes with a foam pop filter, and so I'm gonna demonstrate how this microphone sounds with the pop filter on. Now this is the microphone set to flat with the pop filter on, and pop filters do tend to remove a little bit of the high frequency information, so this is how it sounds like when the pop filter's on in neutral position. Now you're hearing the microphone with the pop filter on and I have the mild high boost added and I don't have anything on the low frequencies. It's just flat on the lows, mild bump on the highs. And now I have the low frequency bump and I have the ultra high frequency bump with the pop filter on. This is what it sounds like with ultra hype mode. I'm gonna leave the pop filter off for a little bit and I am going to leave the low end boosted and I've got the high end boosted in the middle position, the mild position, just so you can get a sense of the other types of sounds this microphone makes. And 
I gotta say, the switches in the back aren't that convenient. They're, they're hard to see, they're tiny, and the little notch that indicates what they're set to is really hard to see. You might need a flashlight if the light is dim, and you kinda need a sharp object or a pointy object to change them. I suspect these switches are mostly meant to be set once and then just left alone, and, and, and they are recessed. It's difficult to knock them out of position. So if you are using it for a broadcast situation or something where you just set it up and leave it, then those switches make sense. I also suspect that they're like that because the SM7B does it that way. Now, as I showed you, the Dynacaster does come with a pop filter, but unlike condenser microphones, you might not need it. And the reason is this microphone actually has three layers of pop filter protection built right into the microphone. So depending on your mic technique, you might not have any pops and plosives at all. And check this out. You can actually take the head basket off, that's what these things are, and wash them. Now, it's not dishwasher safe, you can't throw them in the dishwasher, but you can rinse them out and you can clean all that spit that builds up over the years. I love that SE Electronics is thinking about the future, the long term of being able to take care of your microphone. Let's compare the Dynacaster to a $50 dynamic microphone. This is the Zoom ZDM1 and it is purely passive. There's no built-in amplification. There's no switches. There's no settings. It's just what you hear is what you get. So I think you can hear the difference between a $50 dynamic microphone and a a $300 dynamic microphone. And keep in mind, this microphone is passive. So even though it's a little bit more sensitive than a Shure SM7B, it's only about as sensitive as the Dynacaster with the booster turned off. So what that means is you probably are gonna find yourself wanting an inline booster for this microphone. Your $50 microphone turns into a $150 microphone. Like the Dynacaster, the ZDM1 comes with an external pop filter, so let's do a little plosive test, shall we? Okay, this is a plosive test that is off axis to the microphone. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. And now we're directly on axis to the microphone. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. And now with a pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So we're back to the Dynacaster. I'm still in low and medium high hype mode. And uh, I'm going to, first of all, speak off mic here. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now we're on mic. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And now I'm gonna put the pop filter on. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Having the XLR jack right next to the mount of the microphone, I think is a little quirky, shall we say. Now, I know the SM7B does it as well, and I think it makes sense on a boom arm because you always have that right angle there in some degree, and so it's not really a problem. But if you try and mount this on a microphone stand on a straight pole, you might have some issues because the XLR jack, the cable is gonna be really, really close to the pole. It would have been nice if they'd made it just a little bit further further away from where the microphone mounts. Now on the plus side, it is very tidy, it's very svelte, and uh, the cable isn't going to be poking up and out of the way, so it keeps the sort of profile to a minimum. Also a nice touch is that if you picture an SM7B, on the other side of the XLR jack, it's got a thin cable that goes from the jack to the microphone and it can catch on things sometimes. All of that is done internally on the Dynacaster and it just looks a lot nicer and a lot tidier. The flexibility of this microphone is just bonkers. I mean, the EQ options are, are just really impressive. Now flat, it sounds, you know, a little bit mid-rangey, but in a pleasing way, something you could tailor very easily using outboard EQ. But um, with those switches, you can get really close to an SM7B sound. You can you can emulate an RE20. If you want it really, really bright, you can get like an RE320. It's almost like you're getting three or four microphones in one. And unlike those other dynamic microphones, you've got that built-in preamp, so you're saving even more money. And it's not all about saving money necessarily, but the sound is really good. The drawbacks to the Dynacaster are more in usability rather than sound quality. For the way I use this microphone, it's not a deal breaker at all. For me, ultimately the Dynacaster a huge success for two reasons. It's got a fabulous sound. It's going to sound great on just about any voice and the plosives. It handles plosives so well without having a pop filter in your face. Oh, and don't forget the price because it's about 300 bucks. I know, I know. If you're just starting out, $300 is kind of a lot of money for a microphone. And if you're just setting up your creator studio, then maybe $300 is too much. So maybe the Dynacaster is your second mic down the road. But you know what would be a good first microphone? This one right here, it's from SC Electronics, and even though it's a very different microphone, it's got a lot of features that beginning creators would really love. So check it out.